Dr. Sleuth, and today I'm going to talk about some um, Nightmare Before Christmas WDCC porcelain figurines. Um, WDCC is the Walt Disney Classics Collection, and um, first I'm going to show you the cabinet that I have. Uh, I got this cabinet off of Facebook Marketplace, and these were cabinets for manufactured specifically for WDCC items and they were um, sold to like dealers and retailers. Uh, there might have been a collector's cabinet as well, but this one is a dealer cabinet and that's where this person got it. And so that I purchased it from was from a dealer. Uh, they purchased it from a dealer um, and I purchased it from them. But anyway, this one has this gold plate on it. I've seen these cabinets before at like flea markets and stuff, but it was always missing this plate. So finally found one that had had this uh, insert here, but um, it's not perfect. It's got a lot of blemishes and things. Um, this sign lights up, so I have it lit up, but let me turn the light off so you can see it. There we go. And you can see that it's lit up. And then the top of it looks like, and that's what gives these away, is the green color and the top looks like film. Uh, with the little cutout squares here that and they light up as well so it's a really cool cabinet um, the top part is metal and then this is like some kind of veneer or something on here and mine's like it has a lot of defects to it see here's some where the paint came off and there's a lot of other places that are not perfect these are all made out of really thick glass um, and that's what I like about the WDCC cabinets is that they're all glass, There's, um, which makes display easier and you can see more. Anyway, what attracted me to this one, there are different styles of this cabinet um, that the dealers could get. Uh, there was, there's a more ornate one, there's larger ones that are like just rectangular in shape that also open from the front. And then there's one like this, it's got these little bump outs. These are little bump outs of glass right here. Um, that has uh, that opens from the side this one opens from the front which is what I wanted um, for, uh, for obvious reasons it's easier to get into them when they open from the front since I butt my cabinets next to, next to each other if they open from the side I can't get into them so that works out that they open from the front this one opens from the front but also because some of these pieces will not fit if I if I have to put them in from the side uh, there's certain pieces that I have that would not fit in that way. So I was able to get all my WDCC Nightmare Before Christmas figurines into this cabinet. So that was great. Um, but let's talk about WDCC. I'm going to talk about that for just a second. I have this paper that I uh, printed off from this website. It's called www.wdccduckman.com. This is a fantastic site about... Uh, WDCC items and he, he gives up like all the pieces that were made and when they were made and um, re the retail on them. I printed out just the Nightmare Before Christmas. You can click on whatever movie you want to look at and see what pieces are available for that movie. He has all that on there. He also tells you uh, what these markings mean on the bottom of the figurines. There, there'll be a, a marking like one of these markings on there lots of different ones for the different years and that's why those what they show is the production year of that piece so for this nightmare for christmas opening title piece there is one two three four five production years for that piece and you'll know which one yours is if you just if you look at the bottom and see which one of these symbols is on there like for if it's the feather then it was in 2000 butterfly in 2001 the hat sombrero thing uh hat in 2002 the harp from 2003 and, and so on. So anyway, um, i trying to think what else. And then, yeah, here's the retails, issue price, and then replacement value. This, I think, is a little outdated on the replacement values. Some of these may be too high. Some of them may be too low. So uh, I don't think you can really look at this as far as, like, the resale value or secondary market value anymore. I think is this is not quite accurate for that. But it does give you the original retail, which is kind of nice, and the sculptor who made, who sculpted the piece. So anyway, I'm just gonna go in order in the cabinet. I do have all the Nightmare Before Christmas WDCC pieces. Um, a little bit about WDCC. This, this website does go into that detail if you wanna look at, at it. Like I said, again, it's this website up here wdccduckman.com 
uh, he, he talks about, uh, what, you know, how these were made and everything else. So, but anyway, the, the original premise of WDCC, which stands for Walt Disney Classics Collections, what it stands for, uh, was to make a 3D rendering of a scene or character from a Walt Disney movie that Walt Disney himself was involved with. Now, that obviously did not happen. They expanded it to beyond that because obviously Nightmare Before Christmas came out way after he had passed away. And isn't even, um, it's a Touchstone Pictures label on it, which was owned by Disney. But anyway, so, but they, you know, they made several pieces for this movie as well as like Tangled and uh, um, Little Mermaid and all those movies that came well after um, Walt Disney passed away. So they obviously did not stick to that. Um, which is where the name came from. Walt Disney Classics Collection was talk, was to do pieces from the classic films and shorts that he was involved with. Um, and they do do short, uh, not just feature films. They did like, uh, oh, you know, Mickey and the Beanstalk and things like that as well that Disney would have had um, been involved with. And so these... Uh, symbols also are not just random whatever symbols they actually do represent a classic film or short that Disney was involved with and so the last year that WDCC made anything which was 2012 that was the year that they quit making pieces after that year that's when the line pretty much ended uh, and so they used the symbol right there it's like a palm frond that is supposed to signify um, the Jungle Book which was the last movie that Walt Disney would have been involved with himself, himself would have been involved with. And so that's the last year of the line. So it's, it's kind of um, fitting for that reason. And so anyway, uh, let's go ahead and look at these pieces. So I'm just going to go in order of what's on here. So the first one is opening title, The Nightmare Before Christmas. And so let me get my key to unlock this cabinet real quick. So this cabinet also, oh, there it is, my key right there, also has a hidden drawer. So if you have these, one of these cabinets or, or saw one at, um, and are interested in purchasing it, you may not know this drawer exists. Uh, here it is. There is a drawer that down here. Just kind of nice. You, I think it was probably to put your boxes in. I obviously have boxes that are way too big to fit in here and this, yeah, wouldn't be, wouldn't even come close to fitting all the boxes that I have. So, so I'm going to go ahead and open this real quick. I had it right the first time. Oh, that one is open. Okay. Trying to do this one-handed. All right, here we go. Okay, so the first piece is this scroll from The Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm not gonna pick these up. Um, they're pretty fragile. Like I said, they're porcelain. Uh, these are the most expensive items I probably have in my entire collection. Uh, most of the value is in this cabinet, right? You know, just, just this cabinet. So um, these were pretty expensive. I bought most of these off of the secondary market for that reason. Um, they were just too expensive retail. Uh, I don't know if today that the retail is... Um, if they're still worth less than original retail. Some pieces are, some pieces are worth well over original retail. So it's just one of those things. Uh, for me, most of the pieces I purchased under retail. So it, it worked out well for me. And there were a few pieces I did have to pay a little extra for. But anyway, here's the opening title. And it's just pretty simple. Uh, looks like a movie strip, you know, film strip there. Um, nothing, you know, much to it. Just says Night of Christmas on it. Um, to Stone Pictures, it even has that on there. And just a, you know, Jack's Face logo there. And behind it is the first, um, Jack piece. That one is called, My Christmas is Filled with Laughter and Joy. And there is an error one of this. Uh, mine has the purple mouth, which is the correct one. Uh, they had one that had a black mouth that they had pulled. So that one is more valuable if you had the one with the black mouth. Um... And then there's Sally and Zero and here, I'm going to grab that paper. We'll see how much those pieces were originally. Jack was $160 and the title piece was $29 originally. Sally, I think was $150. Let's see. Yes. Sally is um, called the Sandy Claus Seamstress. 
And if I pick those pieces up, I could tell you what year mine were specifically just by the marking on the bottom. But since, you know, I don't want to pick them up, I will pick one up, but not one of these. I'm going to pick a, uh, maybe a smaller one up, but I really don't want to drop them. Um, here is Zero there, and he is called Spirited Companion, and he would retail for $75. And the base they're sitting on, that dark blue purple base there, it's that is a very heavy resin. And all those, like those little tombstones and things back there are actually removable. They just lay on there. This would have been, this is a, um, a display that would have been given or sold to retailers uh, of WDCC. They weren't open, I don't think, to collectors. Uh, I got these off eBay way, uh, few, several years ago. Anyway, I think the artist is called, his name is uh, Martin Millen. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's what I call him, Martin Millen base these would have been very limited um i don't have all of the bases they made for the nightmare before christmas i have most of them but i don't have all of them so here's this one and then in the back is a tree i don't know if that is specifically for nightmare before christmas it is a martine millen base uh well it's a accent display piece you can't put any figurines on it um and i have another tree over here they are different they look very similar but they are different that one's got like Several pumpkins on it. That one only has the one pumpkin there in the middle. You can see it back there. Anyway, those would also look good with, I think, with the Sleepy Hollow WDCC pieces. So I don't think they necessarily have to be um, specific to Nightmare Before Christmas. Though they do look good with it. So anyway, um, those are also very heavy solid resin and very limited. So those are just not necessarily part of the WDCC line. They will not be, I don't think so, on D uh, Duckman's website. But they were designed for WDCC pieces. So anyway, these uh, Night of Christmas pieces fit right on the space. They are made for those specific pieces as their bases are different sizes. So you can only fit those on there. The other pieces will not fit. And so there's those. There's just Jack Sally Zero and that scroll. And then on this base, this is the, uh, I call it the bridge base, same artist, um, very limited also, you know, before the retailers, um, has the mayor, lock, shock, and barrel on the bridge. And they only fit on this base, nobody else. So anyway, that's pretty cool. I think there is an actual base for just the mayor, and I don't have that one, and I don't really need it because he fits on this one. But I think there was a base designed just for him. And you know, like I said, I don't have that one. And those bases are very, very expensive on the secondary market anymore. So I probably will not be getting it. Unless it, you know, get lucky and find it somewhere. So anyway, so Lock, Shock, and Barrel. Retail for about $55 a piece. Uh, the mare was $155. And his head does turn. I'm going to very gently turn it. Um, yeah, so you can turn his head. And he is made out of porcelain. These are made out of porcelain. So they're very fragile. Very high-end looking. Um, like I said, the WDCC, their goal and premise was to make 3D renderings of a scene or a movie or a character or a character in the movie. Um, they will not have artistic, uh, their own artistic stamp on them. Like, like a Jim Shore piece, you know, where he has the quilt patterns and may even come up with his own pose. That's not movie accurate. Uh, or even the Couture de Force, where they kind of change their clothing and make, put them in different kinds of clothes. That was not the goal for WDCC. They were to, uh, focused mainly on making statues of mo very movie accurate that would look like something from the movie and a scene from the movie. So here you can see Lock, Shock, and Barrel. That's when they introduced themselves. So you can tell just by looking at some of these, like what scenes they are. And so uh, that's pretty cool. Probably why I, these are probably one of my favorite um, figurines that I own is because of that reason is that they uh, they do represent the movie very well. Sorry about my camera moving it around. I'm kind of changing to the paper. So uh, shock is called three of a kind. Um, Barrel is now and forever, and lock was birds of a feather. And so these, um, they retail for $55. they are worth a little bit more than that now. I think you can get them for probably between $75 and $100. For a while, they were bringing $300. 
uh, several years ago, but that value has since dropped. Um, and I'm not sure why that is. Uh, it just suppose it just has. So uh, that's a good thing, I guess, if you're wanting to collect these, that the values dropped a little bit. Bad thing if you already own them and want want uh, the value to grow, but that's okay. Anyway, um, the next one is uh, Dr. Fingelstein back there. And his head does, I'm going to see if I can't get back there, does open up. It's on a hinge. And so you can, yeah, open and see his brain on the inside. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, he's just back there in his wheelchair. And let's see. The next one is the gate, which is right there in the middle. That one retailed for $85. Now this one is resin. It is not porcelain. It looks to be resin to me. Yeah, that, that's not porcelain. In the middle, the gate is metal. So that's kind of cool. Some different materials used there. And then in the back, you see that uh, hill back there that is also just a Mar is a Martine Millen uh, base or um, accent piece. As you can't put any figurines on it, so it's more of an accent piece. Uh, it does. It's not. It's a heavy resin, thick resin, and not necessarily an official WDCC figurine. It's just something that the dealers uh, had access to. And then the next one is Oogie Boogie, and you can see him on that purple base back there with some bugs on the base. Um, he's in his green color. He's got his seams bursting open there with some bugs in it. Um, he's holding his white dice. And then the next one is, oh, Oogie Boogie was called, or um, let's go back to Finkelstein. Finkelstein was called Unhinged. The gate is Jack Skellington's gate. Oogie is, I'm Mr. Oogie Boogie. And then the next one is Zero's Doghouse. And that one is called um, Zero's Doghouse. Just pretty simple and it was only made one year and it's got the harp on it so let's look at that this one I don't mind picking up it's pretty easy to grab that one and he is porcelain and here's what the bottom of a WDCC figurine will look like you see there's the harp it's embossed in there and it says you know Tim Burton's Nightmare for Christmas Zero's Doghouse so it has the name of the piece and then it has that classics Walt Disney collection right there it's a Walt Disney classics collection um, stamp on it So there's that one. And then the next one is uh, back there is the clown with the tearaway face. It's called A Frightful Sight. It was also made one year. should have a B embossed on the bottom. And then the next ones were the Predatory Presence is what they're calling that. And that's Scary Teddy and Killer Duck. And according to this, it should have a like a teacup looking thing on the bottom. So I'm just going to grab one. Just grab him. Now he's resin as well. He does not feel like he's porcelain. And then on the bottom it says The Nightmare Before Christmas, Predatory Presents, Killer Duck, and then there's the classic Walt Disney, and then there's the uh, teacup. Now he is, he feels like he's resin, but I think the teddy is porcelain. Yeah, he feels like he's porcelain. Teddy's porcelain. And, uh, uh, and he has the embossed cup on the bottom. Porcelain, porcelain ones seem to have that, and the other one was printed. So there's those. So very nice, very ni very nicely sculpted. These look, you know, fantastic. As far as a figurine goes, these are you can't get do any better than these. Um, as far as looks go, and then the next one is accolades all around, which is a Jack Skellington piece. There he is, with his hands um, outstretched right there. So he's pretty cool. And he was made, yeah, two different years, according to this. And uh, not sure which one I have. I'd have to look at the bottom. And then the next one, I'm going to turn the page here. I'm trying to do this with one hand. <laughs> okay, is the, the little kid there in front, the corpse child there is the next one. He is called Ghoulish Glee. And he should have a hook on the bottom. So we'll look at him. He's easy to grab. So, And yeah, there's the Walt Disney stamp. And then Ghoulish Glee. And this is the, it's the corpse child. And he has the hook. It's hard to tell if that's what that is. But that is what it is. It's a hook. So uh, 
Oh, look at that. He's even got his little green stuff on his... Uh, yeah, very detailed. So, yeah, there's the hook. That's what the hook looks like. And then the next one is um, Frightful Fountain. This one's a big one. Um, this one is also resin. This is not porcelain. It's one of the harder ones to get. Uh, mine did come broken in the mail. One of his horns broke off, and I just glued it back because it was just too much trouble to, to deal with it. Um, it is a resin piece, and it is really big. I don't know why they decided to make this one so big, but they did. So, um, it doesn't really fit in, like, uh, size-wise, maybe? Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe they make it to where Jack, in proportion to Jack, this is how big this fountain would actually be. That may be what they were going for here. Okay, and the next one, now we're getting into some limited edition pieces. This one I actually bought off Craigslist, and I did, um, this one retails for $275. This one is worth well over that. The Vampire, the vampire Quartet, it's called Fiendish Fans. Uh, I got a paw print there. Um, this one I did have to pay more for, unfortunately. So I did pay a little bit more for that one. Uh, and there they are back there. There we go. They're pretty big. They're pretty big and they're pretty heavy. And they are porcelain. I think, yeah, I think the whole thing might be porcelain. Yep. So they're pretty cool. You got all four of them there, so that's nice. Uh, it is a big piece. So, and then the next one is a limited edition uh, Otherworldly Ovation. This is Sally. And she retailed for $400. Uh, that sounds like a lot of money, uh, which, you know, it is a lot of money, but for a piece this size that's just really what these kinds of things run and she's down there and I did buy her um, from a retailer online so I did pay I think the full four hundred dollars but online she's worth way more than that so I'm glad I bought her when I did anyway the tree is porcelain she's porcelain I think the skeletons are actually resin and then they're on that kind of rope material so, and there's that, you know, the skeleton tree there. So this is a really cool piece. Um, and very big. And very fragile. That one, you know, is nerve wracking. Uh, moving that one around. So the next one is called To the Head of the Team Zero. And that is this uh, Jack, Santa Jack here in his sleigh on this, um, ramp here with his bone deer and you got zero leading the team here now they didn't paint his uh, collar unfortunately yeah he's porcelain I think they're they're por they're either resin these are what's interesting about WDCC is they actually use a lot of different materials they've used uh, porcelain resin um, um, sometimes like rope material like this is uh, and metal sometimes they'll use metal as well or a pewter, whatever they call that. So he's got his rope here in his hand and his uh, beard's blowing back in the wind here. And there you see the detail on the sleigh. It's pretty cool. I think the sleigh's resin. He's, I think this here is metal. It's hard to tell sometimes. Zero is definitely porcelain. So it's pretty cool. This is a very cool piece. I really like this one. Um, how it extends even past the base. It just like how they managed to get all that to, to stand like that and support itself is pretty amazing. So this is pretty cool. That one retailed for um, $500. And then um, I think these limited edition ones, that's the first one I just showed is this one. Um, that one is a theme park exclusive. That one is a theme park exclusive. So you can only get that theme park. I bought it off Craigslist off of a collector who had these on, um, who was on Craigslist. The same guy that I bought uh, the vampires from. I bought that piece from as well. And then another theme park exclusive is down here called uh, Jack's Back. Um, which is Santa Jack on this uh, angel. This is like my favorite scene from the movie. I would have preferred him to be laying down on the book with the sad kind of face, but I do have several figurines and statues, not several, but a few, that already depict that. So I guess this one's 
um, just a different uh, part in the song. So, I mean, maybe that's not such a bad thing. And another theme park exclusive uh, limited edition uh, figurine is this one here, which is called All Hail the Pumpkin King. Now, this one is by far the biggest piece. Um, this one I bought from somebody off of eBay for, for full retail because it was a limited edition piece. Um, it costs quite a bit to ship it because it is massive. This thing is huge. Um, it came in like a two foot by two foot box. And there, unfortunately, was one tiny break there where the tail sticks up. That little piece broke off and I, and I glued it back on. So, unfortunately, there is a little bit of damage. Um, not Nothing severe, but that will affect the value, I'm sure. But... Uh, the fact that that was the only thing that broke coming all the way from California was pretty amazing because as you can see this thing is highly detailed. Lots of little bitty pieces on it. And this has um, resin, porcelain, and metal uh, pieces on here. Anyway, it retails for $750. Uh, this is the most expensive thing in my collection um, per, uh, from what I paid for it wise. Not necessarily value wise. Um, I may have some other things in my collection that are worth more than this than this piece. Not very many. Um, but this one was the most costly. And uh, Jack Beck there is um, he's porcelain. And I believe his straw horse is also porcelain. And then the behemoth here in the front is porcelain. And then this is a really thick rope. And that, that's just uh, like a real rope there. And you can see the little bitty foot. Um, this is all resin, I believe, down here. There's a lot of detail. You see little guy's hand sticking out of this uh, grate down here. And there's a little, there's a rat. There's another rat. A little bitty tail sticking out. You can't see the tails because it's dark. A jack-o'-lantern over there. So very, very detailed. Some metal spikes. I think these are metal. Yeah, they're metal. Those are metal spikes. Got some jack-o'-lanterns sticking on some metal spikes back there. And you got a sign over here that says gatekeeper on it. And so um, very, very detailed. I think these wheels are metal too. Yeah. So very, very cool. And you got his like, uh, his tatters on his clothing sticking out. And I'm amazed none of those broke. And his coattails and just very, very detailed piece. Um, the the one thing I don't uh, that I have an issue with I kind of wish they wouldn't have done that stick up on the tail uh, for the straw horse only because of the added breakage um, possibility but uh, these are supposed to be film accurate so that must be in the movie somewhere I, I didn't really pay that close of attention for a tail sticking up like that but anyway though Jack if you count his fingers there there's five and there's also five on the one holding the torch. Uh, Jack has four fingers, not five. So that is one thing that they did get wrong. Um, they should be four fingers. And so, uh, yeah, it's all called All Hail the Pumpkin King. And um, well, it's only 500 pieces, wow. And so, yeah, it's, it's a shame that they didn't get the number of fingers correct. You should have four, not five. Uh, but everything else on it is super cool though. Very, very, very cool piece. Very big, very heavy. So that's pretty cool. And let's see, some other pieces I didn't show that are here, here on the bottom of this paper. They're calling these time limited. So this one, the first one here is this uh, Timmy and Santa Jack. Let's see, the name was on the next page here. A ghoulish gift is what it's called. And there it is right there. You got Santa Jack there with his arm outstretched and the little boy there, Timmy, reaching for the present. It's a two-piece set. And then also we have, uh, where is he? Wolfman. There he is. The Wolfman. He's called, ha or Werewolf they're calling him. Howling Horror. And he's just got his, you know, his hand stretched out there and you see all his little sharp teeth like I said these things are really detailed and then the, that's really cool and the plaid pattern on his shirt and he's porcelain 
also the right here the mummy boy he's called wide eye wonder they have him at fifty dollars as the retail and they have the um replacement value is fifty dollars he is worth well over fifty dollars uh you, you can't get him for fifty dollars anyway uh, unless somebody happens to get lucky and get it for somebody who's willing to sell it for that but uh him I don't have the box for. I actually got lucky when I purchased him and somebody had him and the two witches together. They didn't have the boxes and they didn't describe, I just happened across it on eBay, that it was WDCC. I just happened to recognize this as what it was. Um, so I got these pretty cheap, but no box, unfortunately, and no certificate of authenticity, which they all, all these pieces have. This one says 15th anniversary on it. Um, the Nightmare of Christmas, Wide-Eyed Wonder, Mummy Boy, and it's got the crown embossed on there. And so that is definitely a WDCC piece. Because, uh, yeah, there's the crown. Uh, 2008. Would have been the 15th year. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, and then here's the witch, which is called Enamored Enchantresses. Now this one I also bought from, you know, like I said, in, in the same um, auction as the... Uh, mummy boy and unfortunately her nose broke off in shipping like I said these didn't have the original box usually if I don't like to buy figurines especially fragile ones without the original box because it almost always they they come broken they're very more likely to come broken that way and this one did I just glued her nose back on uh, these are really expensive to replace I mean ideally I would ha uh, buy a set that's perfect with the box and the certificate but getting these as cheap as I did I'm not complaining um, these retail for $225 for the set and I paid not even anywhere in the ballpark of that so uh, for all three pieces so they were pretty much a steal for me I just got super lucky on that and uh, and just happened to notice what they were though I wasn't sure but I was willing to take a, a chance on them and they also have that crown embossed on the bottom so and that's what they should have yes okay so the next one is the bat kid uh, terrifying tyke here he is and he retails for $99 actually he may not be porcelain no, I think he, I think he's resin. His base, not sure. I don't think he's porcelain. It'd be nice if they told you what materials they were made out of on here too, but most of them are porcelain, but not all of them. Uh, let's see, the next one is the devil, right there. Um, like, the, it's pretty nice on The Nightmare of Christmas. They actually made a lot of pieces for this movie. And the devil is called Debonair Demon. You can see him there. And uh, he retailed for 125 And then also under Sea Gal here is Briny Beauty. Now, she's got some kind of neat material there on her um, bottom half there. It's kind of cool. And... Uh, she retailed for 140 and Then up here, you have Jack's house. That is also not, um, it is not porcelain. It's like a resin material too. And then it's got this like plasticky base. Uh, that It really doesn't look like WDCC uh, as far as the rest of these pieces. It's called Surreal Estate. And it retailed for 150 But it's not nearly as nice as the porcelain figurines in my opinion it's it, it's cheaper materials to me being used on that but it is very detailed as you can see probably the most accurate representation of Jack's house there is because you see the really long steps there most of the Jack houses they make they don't make the steps that tall um, on this one they did and and also the top curve of his house is usually not uh, on other depictions of his house is usually not um, curved quite that much so it's uh, an, probably the most accurate depiction of his house you're going to find and then you can see the rocks there too underneath suspended in the air and I think that one actually lights up I think you can put batteries in that I'm pretty sure you can and it lights the windows up so that's pretty cool 
So anyway, in the um, 2011, is Mr. Hyde back there. And they're calling him Macabre Madman. And he retailed for $199, so almost $200 there. Uh, and he has that uh, chain in his hand, a metal chain in his hand. Um, even their fingers look very film accurate. Uh, so yeah, he's pretty cool. He's got a lot of texture in his hat. Like I said, these are really, really, really nice figurines. And then the last figurine, from tw which is 2012, the, and that was the end of WDCC, is the Harlequin Demon back there. Yeah, drop my paper here and see what he retail for. I want to say he's probably about the same price as that other guy. Yep, hundred and oh oh I skipped one. I'll do him first. He's $199 and he's called multi tentacled monstrosity. And the guy I skipped is right there, the Cyclops there. And he is called Myopic Monster. And he retailed for $125. So like I said, you know the the re these are fairly expensive uh figurines. Um like the Harlequin Demon there was 200 and then those vampires, which are a much bigger piece, was 275 So it looks like the prices went up a little bit. Um, though I paid more than 275 for them. I would think that a piece that size would be more like three to $400. Um, let's see what Sally was, because Sally is much bigger than that one and more detailed, in my opinion. And I think she was 400 so let me see what she was. I don't remember now. Sally. There she is. Sally was, yep, $400, $399. So maybe $299 probably would have been more accurate for those, but they were $275, so they're thereabouts. Anyway, I think that that's all of them, guys. Um, if you have a favorite piece, you know, be, feel free to put in the comments what that was. Um, I'm going to, hmm, man, these are all so nice. I'm going to go with the Sally tree at the bottom there as my favorite. Uh, Though I love that scene there, but um, I still like that Sally tree, I think the best. But here they all are. This uh, sleigh is pretty cool too. It's pretty oogie boogie back there. So th I thank you guys for watching. Um, hope this video was informative to you. Uh, if you want more information on WDCC, like I said, you can go to uh, www.wdccduckman.com. It's a website that I use uh, that I used to uh, have more information on these pieces. But he also goes into detail on other movies. So if you're interested in um, a different movie, uh, you could go there and check that out. And thank you guys for watching and please subscribe and bye.